Hello, everybody. Ella J here on behalf of WrestleZone. And today I'm joined by your interim reality of wrestling diamond division champion, Mia Friday. How are you today? I am good. How are you? I'm fantastic to be catching up with you. It's been about two and a half, three years you you have grown up, my friend, right before our very eyes. And obviously, you like we said, you are now an interim champion in reality of wrestling, kind of a full circle thing for you, which we'll get into a little bit later. But I wanted to start off with some kind of non-wrestling, but it also ties in with wrestling. You are also a graphic designer as you run and own Meteora Designs. You got t-shirts, posters, stickers, logo designs, and obviously video editing. Can you tell us more about your business and the services that you offer and kind of what prompted you to start up Meteora Designs? Oh my goodness. I am so like, like, thank you so much for asking. Yeah, it's just, um, I've always had, um, a passion for like video editing, graphic design. Like, like I remember I was like nine or 10, like the moment that I got a tablet, somehow I was like already teaching myself how to make like, like wrestling, like posters and then everything like that. I've just, I've always loved like doing graphic design and mixing that up with wrestling. And I don't like, I don't remember where this came from, but I, it must've been either like my mom or my dad, just like, they're like, why don't you like start a business, you know, like you make your own t-shirts, you make all of your own merch, you can probably make some money, you know, because I mean, you don't got no job, you're out here wrestling and going to school and everything. <laughs> and I was like, you know what, like, what's the worst that could happen? So yeah, I started doing that. And it's just been awesome. Like, I like, I have no experience with like a business or like, I had no clue what I was doing. But so to get like customers and wrestlers being like, hey, Mia, like make me some merch. I'm like, really? You, can you trust me with that? <laughs> so it's just, it's it's really exciting for me and it's it's like it's a job that I have a genuine passion for and I eventually want to grow this business to where I can um like have live off of that whenever I'm in college you know and then maybe when I'm wrestling full-time when I'm out of college you know that could be like a full business for me that's my, just, that's my goal is just to keep like growing that business no, I was going to ask you, and you kind of perfectly segue because like right now you're in your senior year, college may be coming up in the fall, or maybe you're taking a semester off or something. I know video editing was something that you considered doing for college. Is that something you're still aiming or planning to do for college whenever you do go? Or what what is your plan after, you know, high school graduation? Oh yeah. I remember said so I always wanted to do video editing, but I decided that I wanted to go to a specific college in Houston because I just wanted to go to the the college that's closest to Booker T school yeah. <laughs> so I picked um University of Houston at Clear Lake and all they have is graphic design I'm like okay shoot I'll do that <laughs> so that'll be I'll just I'll be majoring in graphic design yeah you know it's crazy like, like you're just naturally you're just legit like naturally gifted at it like you what did you use to teach yourself I know obviously you know there's YouTube tutorials maybe that you used to watch I don't know how did you tell us about the process of teaching yourself like the graphic design work or was it just like experimenting oh yeah I think like 10 percent of it was like YouTube and 90 percent was like trial and error because like you know I've been using like like I like I still edit like on my phone and I've been using the same app for what like 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 five or six years now so it really yeah. is just trial and error like I like I like I hope to this day that no one ever sees what I first made when I was younger but like I I like I started building a foundation at a young age of like how to use these like these apps and it's like my parents are like you know they just see me playing on my tablet me I'm starting the empire they don't even know it so <laughs> Mia Friday is going to be a millionaire mogul in wrestling and graphic design. You're going to be a you're going to be a double threat, Mia. I'm I'm so curious for you though because I know you once considered also fashion design as a as a future career path, and you've been involved with music, so obviously you are very artistically inclined. So can you tell us about some of your inspirations or influences in the art realm, specifically in fashion and or graphic design? Oh, that's a hard one. Cause, like when I really think back onto it, like I don't know, like, like where the love of it came from, you know, I don't like, like, I couldn't really like tell you where it started. But like, like, like you said, with music, I definitely knew that I wanted to um, like, I think we mentioned this in the last interview, yeah. once I started getting into rock and metal, like that's when yeah. I knew that like, I wanted to actually do it. But when it comes to graphic design, I don't even know if I could really like, point where that love began like when it came to fashion design 
I think that's just because like I love I've always like growing up I've always loved the idea of design and, like when it comes to just like like anything like planning something out and getting to make it how you want it and being as creative as you want and seeing it come to fruition I just think that's a cool process in general like come, like for any type of design anyways Speaking of your kind of own designs, you obviously it depends on the client and in their preferences and negotiation. But when it comes to your own personal style, how would you describe your personal art style or aesthetic as Mia Friday? Ooh, here I I might need your help describing it because I always do sparkles. There's always got to be butterflies. It's yes. always got to be like cutesy and either like silver or gold. Like what? What would like? I don't know. How would you describe so, like a So I actually had this because I was going to talk about your ring gear and it's very lively and co colorful. It's sometimes galactic, but also kind of fairy-esque at the same right. time. <laughs> you would definitely have an affinity for like the pinks and the light and the lavenders and like the the light, the pastel-y colors, I feel like. But you can also go a little bit darker. Like I said, you have some like galactic inspired, like galaxy inspired gear as well. But it definitely... um. Cool colors is I seemingly your preference, like the blues, the pinks, the purples. Um, so definitely like the the cool colors, but it's very vibrant. But also, it depends. But you seem to have an affinity for the cool colors. It seems. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I, because at first, like I've always been obsessed with pastel colors, and then gear yeah. makers like you know, like I got like you know this blue, and I was like, oh, I don't know. And then I tried it, and I'm like, oh okay, you know what, like, you know, I can, I can really go into doing some more, like, like, bolder colors, like, I think my galaxy gear, it has, like, some orange in it, and I was, like, well, I don't know about orange, but then when, like, I tried it on, I was, like, oh, <laughs> so really, it's, 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 like, it's all of, like, the cool colors, and like you said, like, you said it best, like, all, like, the galactic, and the, um, like, the, the spark, like, you, you said it better than I did, that's perfect. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so there's nothing just like your graphic design, you know, you're going to experiment like because it's you're designing something, it's just ring gear, you know, it's it's fabric rather than, you know, like a on your tablet, but it, it kind of goes to that same scope. But I'm glad you brought this up because one thing I have noticed in your own t-shirt designs and obviously your in-ring presentation, and also I believe one of your moves is named after this, the image of the butterfly. I'm so curious to know if the butterfly symbolizes something specific to you, what does this butterfly mean to you? Oh, I, I can't really like, oh, the, the butterfly, it happened just like a couple of years ago. It was definitely like after the last time we spoke and it, yeah. it just kind of came from I like I'm not too good when it comes to like explaining like like symbolism and everything but like okay. I like whenever I, like the more I I kept seeing like a butterfly like more everywhere that I go and I kept seeing like quotes about it and, like the butterfly represents like change the butterfly the like, yeah exactly yeah and I kind of felt like that described who I was at the time and I'm like you know what I'm seeing butterflies like everywhere in my life you know and I, I really love this meaning behind it I feel like it's a sign you know and on top of that butterflies are like super cute <laughs> so it kind of just like naturally like worked its way into everything like without even realizing it I was putting a butterfly on a shirt I was like oh that's cute <laughs> it's kind of just like in the back of my mind all the time and it is kind of like it shows like in my gear and in my shirts and everything yeah, you got the the butterfly. I think they're stickers, unless you draw them on really well to where they look like real life. <laughs> um, yeah, that that you put around your eyes too, and obviously, I believe one of your moves is the butterfly effect. Yeah, um, and then so yeah, it's it is a sign of of change and kind of metamorphosis and, and growing. But you know, like we we kind of touched on it, your ring gear in in that department, you've got this lively and colorful kind of galactic kind of fairy-esque which may be drawn from one of your favorite wrestlers Candice LeRae she's kind of the poison pixie what would you say are your general <laughs> sources of inspiration when you're envisioning your ring gear specifically what does that process look like for you you're definitely right definitely Candice like before I even started wrestling I was already saving pictures of Candice be like you know what? I like this gear I like this gear yeah she, I loved how she always like her patterns it would be like cupcakes or like her patterns are always super cute and I'm like you know what like I love that I I love like like she was a, at least for me the first wrestler that I saw bringing like really cute things like <laughs> to yeah. gear and when um 
when it came to the tassels, like the first thing I thought it was like, you know, Bailey, I always had my Bailey bands on. Yeah. But then whenever I started like getting into it more, I started like, I knew I wanted tassels on my gear. You know, I wanted the Bailey and I was like, okay, who does that? And uh, that's when I found out about Joshi wrestling. And I was like, oh my gosh, I got to step my game up. Like, this is amazing. So I like, the like the main reason like I got into Joshi wrestling in the first was just trying to find gear. And then like, I fell in love with the wrestling too. And so that's where I got mostly like all of my inspiration for my gear is just like descending, like just finding like these, these wrestlers and being like, you know what, like just send in, just take a screenshot be like, I want that. <laughs> And then, you know, making your own specific twist on it and adding in those little details like the butterfly and the sparkles and all of that. But yeah, I definitely can see some, a little bit of Candice LeRae in the, the pixie kind of fairy department, you know, with your, you, you've got a lot of light pink, you, your, your gear is just beautiful, like whatever it is, you know, whether it's galaxy or sparkles or kind of pixie-esque it's it's very it, it's very well put together too you know and I can definitely see some Joshi in there which we'll talk about your trip to Japan in a little bit but when it comes to your overall character development Mia Friday is this overall very bubbly vibrant positive being talk to us about the process of developing yourself in that aspect because I feel like especially so young you have a a pretty good handle on who Mia Friday is you've stayed very consistent in that tell us about who Mia Friday is as a character and kind of the process of developing your identity wise oh yeah I mean you said it best like the the main idea behind like Mia Friday is just she's like happy to be here but with like a like a little bit of a charismatic twist on it like <laughs> like like a happy to be here but without the let's go if that, if that makes sense like she um she's like she's very happy and uh, like she she's pumped she comes out excited and you know when like when the bell rings though like she's like a not not saying like her demeanor goes like like completely serious but she has yeah. more of like that that confident smirk you know and when it comes to like evolving my character like it's it's like as of recently like being a senior you know and like the, like growing up like with your character it gets a little hard at times because like you know me like 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 I want to be a rock star I want to be a designer like <laughs> and sometimes like like sometimes I'm ready to sometimes like there's just some days when I come to the ring you won't see like the the smile it's just more of like a, you know like what's up I'm your Friday <laughs> and yeah. just it's kind of like more recently it's been trial and error of like okay where am I going to take this character now that I'm like getting older and the but the main thing that always stays the same is like the smile and just the like you said all of the butterflies and the the magic that comes with it well yeah the beautiful thing is that at least right now on the indies you kind of have you have a lot of creative control over how you want to present yourself you know and part of that butterfly is that metamorphosis so being open to maybe maybe we get a, a more a more aggressive Mia Friday down the line that's a that's the all oh, that door is open for that you know and, and being open to that I think is a sign of growth and maturity you know and also coming with age too you know you're you're, you're still only 18 years old you're still very youthful and kind of in that happy to be here but also you're not 13 anymore. So you got a right. little bit of an extra edge to you right now. And, you know, like we said, you started training at the age of 13. You are now 18. So it's been five years. How do you think that you've grown as a person and as a competitor during your time in the sport so far? Oof, it's definitely like somehow I feel like it's more mental than everything. Yeah, it's. <laughs> Like, obviously, I've grown up as a wrestler. Like, I've, I've, you know, I've cleaned up everything. I'm just working on who I am as a wrestler. But, like, more than anything, I've gotten past so many mountains when it comes to wrestling. Just, like, starting off as, like, a young woman in the business, you know, there's so many things that, like, mentally, you don't know if you're able to, like, get through. It's just there's yeah. so many different, like, things to to overcome. And I feel like if there's anything, like, the the biggest takeaway out of everything in my wrestling career is like, I think I'm ready to be in this business. This business chews out so many like young women. And I think I've definitely grown just mentally knowing I'm ready to take on anything. You're also growing as a, a person too, as a young lady herself. I'm so curious, you know, starting at such a young age, 
did you feel a pressure at all to kind of mature faster being assuming you're being surrounded by you know all these older and maybe more established wrestlers yes and that was something that like always confused me like I was so quick to like want to grow up and then I realized like like oh my goodness I'm letting like all of like my childhood like like pass me by you know it was this weird thing of like you know, I want to be respected, but at the same time, like, why can't I just be a teenager and live my life? And that was, like, another thing that, like, I, I had to learn to overcome, like, how to balance, like, how to balance both. And, like, like I'm thankfully, like, now I'm here today where, like, I'm respected in the locker room. And at the same time, I can still, like, go be a teenager and go do what I, like, do my thing. You know, obviously, like we said, th this growth for you is very apparent. You can see it in your work. And even just speaking with you, you can see that you've matured. And this growth also earned you a spot on the 2023 PWI Women's 250 list, where you ranked at number 229. Congratulations. That's a, a, a huge sign and a huge kind of validation for your progress. Tell us about your initial reaction to finding this out and also what this honor maybe meant to you. Oh, I, like, I wasn't even going to check when everybody was posting, like, oh, my goodness, thank you, PWI. I'm like, oh, my goodness, good for them. Like, I didn't even think for a second, like, oh, I could possibly be on that list. And then my dad was like, you know, hey, like, I bought it. You're in here. I was like, no. Because <laughs> to be on that list, I, like, at first I didn't believe it, you know? And then, like, to just read what, like, they wrote and everything, and maybe it would kind of put into perspective, like, like, oh my gosh, like, people are watching, you know, like, in my mind, like, like, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, school, my business, I'm just thinking about getting better, I didn't even realize, like, like, wow, I actually am, like, advancing in my career, you know, I'm always so just, like, worried about what's going on right now, sometimes, like, I can't, like, it's hard for me to think about, like, how much I've progressed, and just that, like, be on that list, it kind of, like, it really helped me to take a step back and be like, you know what? Like, I'm getting so stressed out about so many things. I'm always worried about if I'm enough. And I feel like just this this spot right here, this little like thing they wrote for me, like, I think I'm enough. I'm in here with like a pretty great list. So it was just, it was exactly what I needed at that time. It Like we said, validation. And we'll talk about one of the things that was mentioned in that little blurb, which we kind of alluded to earlier. You received the opportunity to train and wrestle in Japan with Ice Ribbon for a few weeks last year. I believe this trip also marked your official Japan debut? Yes. Mark? Yeah. So <laughs> tell us about some of your takeaways from this experience from a wrestling standpoint. Oof. I... Man, a big takeaway because it was whenever I got back, everybody was like, "Oh my god, what'd you learn? What'd you learn?" And I was like, "They made sure it's a universal thing that you know your basics." Because <laughs> yeah. I I've always like the school that I train at in Bryan, they're always so strict about basics, and everybody was like, "Like you know, like I bet Japan's like the complete opposite." I'm like, "No, basics are pretty important." Because <laughs> before we could learn anything else, we had to make sure that our basics were right, and we had to drill that over and over again, and um. Just the the main, that was my biggest takeaway from being in Japan. I, like, I got to, like, clean up my basics. I got to learn a couple of new moves. And it really was, if anything, it was just more motivation. Because I was up there for about two and a half weeks. So, like, just enough to, like, learn a whole bunch, but to still want more, you know? Yeah. So whenever I got back, it was kind of, like, for me, it was, like, go, go, go. Like, the most, like, I've ever worked just because, like, you know, like I want to get back there. I want to keep like being able to travel the world and learn all these new things. Yeah, you know, as a as a at that point, a seventeen year old traveling basically across the other side of the world. You know, um, in in new territory. You know, obviously language is another barrier. You know, obviously you you said you learned a lot wrestling wise. I'm curious in kind of a new environment like that. Did you learn anything about yourself? Maybe. Oh. I learned about what my body can take. <laughs> I, it's it's not like what everybody was saying, like, you know, oh, they're going to beat you up real bad. They didn't like, <laughs> they weren't um like, it wasn't abusive or anything, but like, if you're like, you know, like dead on the floor, like I can't do it anymore. Like normally at my school, they'll be like, okay, take a break here. They're like, well, get up. <laughs> yeah. So it was the, I never had anybody push me like that really. So I learned more about like, about like perseverance really my my body was so sore every day that I woke up you know it was the most that like I've ever been through and I just like at the end of it all I was so grateful that like 
I was able to do it. Like you never realize what you're like, you're capable of until like you actually do it. You did have some time, luckily, probably maybe even while sore, to explore some scenes out in Japan as well. I saw some of your photos on Instagram. What aspects within the the Japan culture or food particularly stood out to you during your time? Oh, see, look, I've always loved Asian food because I, my mom says it's like, it's natural because like my dad's half Filipino. So like, it's like, it's supposed to be in yeah. me. I just think it just, it tastes good. So that whole time, like my... My parents, personally, they were struggling. All they wanted was KFC, you know? They were looking for the Burger King. I wanted to go to, like, all, like, the small... (laughs) I wanted to go to all of the tiny restaurants, you know? I wanted to see it all. And, like, I just... I... We got to go to Tokyo, and I think that was... Because we we stayed in Morabi, but we took a train to Tokyo one day, and that was, like, our one day that we had for, like, sightseeing and everything. Yeah. And, uh... The main thing I didn't realize, like, wrestling is way more popular than what I thought. Like, everybody's, you know, like, oh, wrestling's big in Japan. I'm like, yeah, I know. And then I get there, you know, and I've never seen, like, wrestlers on billboards in, like, the center of Tokyo. Like, I've never seen just wrestling, like, on every corner you turn. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. (laughs) Because, you know, like, growing up, like, wrestling fans, like, sometimes you wonder, like, you you get what I mean. And just to, like, get off the train and see that, like, it's such a popular and like widely accepted thing. I'm like, oh, I'm home. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, it, like like you said, a widely accepted thing. I was closeted. I was a closeted fan for the <laughs> longest time, especially in high school. It's, it's mean- great. It, it's great that you're getting to live out what I wish I could in high <laughs> school and be well. You are a restless. You kind of have no choice but to be open about it. But you know that that is awesome. Obviously, you know, kind of. Fast forwarding, though, to the beginning of 2024, you had another exciting opportunity to again wrestle one of your inspirations. But this time you had the added you had the added bonus of defending your interim row Diamonds Division championship against her. Of course, I'm talking about Roxanne Perez. Roxy, you've wrestled her before, but this match had an extra significance, I feel. So tell us about your experience with this and the emotions surrounding this specific match. Oh, I, man, like, as soon as that match announced, like, I think, it, like, I think I found out about it in, like, October or November, and from that point to when I wrestled her in January, just the most stressful, like, time of my life, like, because when it, the, a lot of people were telling me, they're like, you know, like, that never happens, like, like, then, it, like, she's under contract, like, that's such a big opportunity, you know, yeah. and, like, I was getting, like, the local news interviewed me. I you saw know? that, yeah. Yes, and everybody was making such a big deal out of it. And like, you know, I've been under like a lot of pressure before, but this kind of pressure felt like, it felt personal, you know? Like when I had that match, I wanted to be really proud of it because I knew there were going to be so many eyes on me. So definitely like leading up to that, I put so much pressure on myself thinking like, you know, like, oh, I got to fix this. I got to fix this, you know? Like thinking that I needed to like change a whole bunch before that match. And then like, Whenever I got there, like, and I met her and we started talking, like all that stress just kind of like went away a little bit, you know, it kind of felt like, like seeing like, like, like a longtime friend, you know, like I felt like I didn't feel that kind of nervousness anymore. I kind of just felt that comfort and like, she helped me out and like, she made things like so easy. And it was just like, like we had a great time (laughs) and it was like, I was proud of it. Like I put so much pressure on myself and then like on the actual day of the show, it was just all magic. And I was, it was just, it was so amazing. And I was so grateful that it happened. Like we said, yeah, kind of a, a full circle. There's that familiarity there, obviously different points in your careers now, but also kind of parallel in a little bit to how Roxanne came up. You're kind of a couple years behind, but you've had pretty similar paths thus far, you know, starting training at 13. And obviously that's one of the reasons why you look up to her, but you've also said that she's helped you out tremendously. So tell us how she has specifically helped and influenced you thus far. Oh yeah. Just, you know, from the moment I, I met her, I was like, I think I was like 13 or 14. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, um, you know, like from that point, like she immediately gave me her number and she was like, you know, like, like I'm here for you. And like at my wrestling school, like I don't have any like like I there's, I don't think there's anybody else like in the state of Texas that I could like that could relate to me, you know, starting at yeah. 13. 
<laughs> and that she she knew everything. She was always that person that I could text to about like any little thing, like whether like, you know, big or small. I I had someone who's been there. And like with my position, there's so many things you go through and there's not really anyone that can really relate to it. So she was just I was so grateful to have her. And she did so much of just helping me open up and find who I was. And like you said, I just think we've like our paths have been so similar that it's just like it just clicked and she was able to help me out. That, you know, in kind of in that same spirit, by the time this airs, International Women's Day will be just a few days away. It'll be Women's History Month. So in that spirit of that holiday, can you tell us about some of the other women in wrestling who have inspired or empowered you and, and how they've influenced you? Ooh, does it have to be people that I met? Or... Not necessarily. Hmm. Well, I gotta just, man, I gotta say Mercedes Monet. I, I just gotta have to say it, you know? Even now, like, she still inspires me. I just love how she keeps reinventing herself. Because sometimes, like, in, in my stage of my life, I always feel like I feel lost sometimes. And she always reinvents herself. And she's just, it's, she's like, she's magic. Every time I watch her in the ring, she is just like, I, I have such, like, a, a focused look in my eyes because I just, she really is just an inspiration to me. I just, and um, still to this day, Bailey, the same thing with like Mercedes, just keep on reinventing yourself and like still finding success. And like right now that really speaks to me. And um, yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I'm sure I probably even said this in the last time we interviewed, but those two, like those, those will still like to this day have been such like a big influence for me. And you recently, again, last summer, had an opportunity to kind of interact with one of their former colleagues, wrestling veteran Alicia Fox, Bix Crow. I saw the video of you guys on Instagram <laughs> at one of Reality of Wrestling summer shows. I'm curious, were you able to gather any advice or words of wisdom from her? Tell us about that interaction with her. Oh, she was so sweet. Like me, like me and all the girls, we were all like lined up, like so nervous when she first walked in, you know, and then like it immediately she's the went sweetest, away. like legit. I've met her. She is she's kind of like you, very bubbly and, and just very <laughs> approachable. Right. She's amazing. Yeah, we were like we were just blown away at how sweet she was. And she was just, you know, like she was just being a locker room mom, just giving us like advice in general, on, like making it into business and everything. And she um she was just so helpful. Like, I, I never would have thought that, like, she was like, I need to get a picture with you. I was like, with me? With me? <laughs> and so and she was just like, it was so great to be around her and to, like, like, she was just, like, another, like, a wrestler that I grew up watching. And then to share a locker room with her, like, it's, it, it was, it was big motivation for me. I'm like, okay, you know what? Like, I got, I got to keep going. Like, I, I can see something happening one day. Two more questions for you, you know, kind of we you've talked about you've learned from uh, from Bailey, from Sasha, from Japan, from Roxanne throughout your career. You've obviously been around a lot of veterans throughout your career thus far. Has there been like a certain piece of advice or words of wisdom that have really stuck with you? And who did they come from? Ooh, this is like. The first one that came to my mind, it was I wrestled Eva Lee's back in December, and that was a match that I was just super nervous for because, you know, I already knew I was going to like wrestle Roxanne like the following month. So it was yeah. just a lot of stress like already in me. And she just taught me to just like breathe. And it's really simple, but like like no one's ever told me that to just like to breathe in and out right before I go out. And I like I realized like it would show like when I walk out, I look all nervous. Like I look Your like adrenaline's to, like, pumping too. Yeah. Right. And so like, she just like, she held me and she told me to just breathe. And for some reason that's always stuck with me. Every time like my heart starts beating real fast like that before a match, I just think like, oh, I can just breathe. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> It, it it's so hard especially in that moment where you're focused on so many other things I imagine you know and also you're like taking in the energy of the crowd and your music knowing you're about to go out there so I feel like that that's a good conscious thing to remind yourself and kind of get into the routine of but it seems you've gotten that down which is great to hear and you know final question as you're now looking towards the future it's going to be coming up you know five years in this business now, which is crazy. Time goes by so fast. As you're looking towards the future, what are some of your personal and professional goals for the next year or so? 
Ooh, for the next year with with how crazy everything senior is senior year is, I'm just trying to graduate, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's um and then you know, like in the fall, I'll be moving into my my college dorm. I'll be training full time at Reality of Wrestling. So right now I'm really focused on just getting situated and like you know, it's a it's a big like adjustment in my life and I haven't really thought about it. I've been so worried about like everything wrestling, everything that like I'm just like, you know, every all of my passions and everything. And now it's time for me to be an adult. <laughs> so it's a really weird like like change in my life. But like definitely it's just learning how to live on my own and do my own thing while at the same time, like I still wanna I still wanna keep on being the best that I can be, you know. I I don't see it as like a time to slow down. I see it as a time where like, you know what? Like, I don't have anyone to blame. Like, I can't blame my parents. I can't blame high school. Whenever I move in, like, it's up to me. It is also creating that balance, though. I completely understand your ambition and stuff, though. But just don't let yourself get burnt out, Mia. You know, oh. take that time to breathe, as Ivelisse would say. <laughs> <laughs> Mia, before we let you go, can you please share where the listeners can find you online? Oh, yes. You can find me online at It's Mia Friday. That's Instagram, Facebook, and X. And I have a pro wrestling tease store. And also, I just released my new Wrestle Buddies. So you can message me on, on social media and I can get one of those shipped out to you. It's adorable. Can you show us it for a second, like up close, yeah. if, if that's possible? <laughs> it's beautiful. You got that galaxy gear going on there. I see you. Thank you. <laughs> and oh, she got are those the tassels too? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Mia, thank you so much for chatting with me here today. It's been an absolute pleasure again. Thank you so much for having me.